Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroddenFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial we're going to tie a great fly for the summer, the foam beetle. Stay tuned. Here's a sneak peek of our finished beetle. This is a, a really simple pattern. Works extremely well in the summertime. Uh, it's a fun one to tie. There's definitely some variations to it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do though is get this out of the vise. We're going to change the camera a bit and we're going to cut out the foam. Then afterwards we'll get a clean hook in the vise and start tying it. So there's your sneak peek. And by the way, be sure to stick around after the tying. Right at the end, I give you a little hint. So the first thing we're going to do is use this foam cutter to create our beetle body. Now the beetle body cutter that I'm using is from River Road Creations. And if you look at a size 12 is checked off. Um, the size 12 is the only one that I own because I tend to fish size 12 and size 14 beetles more often than not. So would it be use useful to have one of each? Sure, probably. But what I tend to do is I look at this as if I only had a size 14, I couldn't make the body any larger. But if I have a size 12, I can kind of find a way to reduce the size a little bit. So that's what we're gonna to do today. In fact, I'm gonna be making a size 12 body, but I'm gonna put it on a size 14 hook. Will it still be a, a little wide? Sure, but in my mind, I think those for those beetles, I really want them wide because I want them slapping down against the water. Now to use this cutter, it's pretty darn simple. You get your foam, get your favorite piece of foam, and I'm looking for a piece that has a little bit of kickback whenever I squeeze it. I don't have the exact millimeters for this piece, but there's, there's a lot of foam out there that I don't like. So this is a piece that, that I definitely do like. Now with the cutter, it comes with this little rubber piece and the actual metal cutter. And to use it, it's pretty simple. You just take the cutter, and I kind of line mine up so it's just extending over the edge, or right near the edge. Then I push down, and you push down until you feel the cutter going into the rubber. Once you have it into it, then you can simply lift up. If you have a little tool to get it out of there, that's fine. Otherwise, there is your, your beetle body. Uh, nothing to it, really simple. And now we're ready to start tying. So we're gonna take this beetle body, we'll get our vise out here, and we'll start tying this foam beetle. All right, we have the foam cut out for our beetle. Let's start tying. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a Honic Competition hook. It's their H130BL. It's a dry fly hook, and as we're kind of talking about in this video, I'm using a size 14. Now, if you ask me in the summertime, what is my favorite size beetle to use? It's going to be either a 12 or a 14. It's really going to be probably dependent on the time of the summer you catch me. For some reason, as the summer goes on, as it gets later, warmer, as the water starts to dry up a bit, I tend to go smaller sizes. So, let's kind of talk about how we're going to do that with this fly. I'm going to be using uni thread. Size is 6 aught. And the first thing we're going to do is create just a thread base. Down and back. Next, let's grab our foam. So this is the piece that we just cut out. And if you kind of take a look at the profile, this slender section is intended to be the tie-in section. Now, if you look, it really covers most of the gap, and, or most of the, the shank of the hook. And I don't want it to do that necessarily. I want to have a little bit of room up front. So I'm just going to lock it first in place, right behind the eye, and I'm going to start back. Now because we've already talked about the notion of this being a larger piece of foam, I would typically tie it off somewhere around there because that's about where everything kind of occurs at this one. Yet because it's going to be a little bit longer, I really want to shorten it a bit, not just by cutting it. So what I can do is, I'm going to do, try to do this on camera, I'll take a couple really loose wraps and I'll go back a little bit further than I normally would. And once I get to about that point, we'll say it's about right there, I'll just really bear down on my 6 aught thread. And now I can wrap back forward and lock as much of that foam in place just to kind of get a nice consistency through the body. So once it's there, if you pull down your thread and all that foam turns, it means you probably didn't do the best job of locking it in place or you're using really a, a foam that's a little bit too closed cell. Let's go back to the, the lock-in point. 
And right here you can go with whatever your favorite body material is for a beetle. You can use peacock hurl. In this case, I'm going to use um, an ice dub. I'm going to use peacock. But I am going to use a dubbing loop to lock it in place. So to create that, I'm just going to grab my Stonfo dubbing loop tool, pull my thread out, create a little loop. Bring my thread forward. Next, I'm going to grab my peacock, and I'm just going to get two pinches of this. I don't need a lot. Here's a very healthy pinch. This should probably will do it. Let me take a look. Mm, let me get just a little bit more. So in this case, it's about a pinch and a half. And what's nice about this tool, if I pull it towards me, it will tighten the thread down. If I let it go towards the camera, it will open the thread and it will allow me to place that material in there. So I can kind of lock it in place, move it around. But once I have it straight, I'm just going to spin it. Use my fingernail to kind of pick all that stuff away from the, from the thread. Now if you have a rotary vise, you can simply use that portion right now. Or with this, it's pretty simple to just start wrapping it around. This transformer is a rotary vise. Um, I try not to use that rotary arm in the videos just because I know not everybody has a rotary vise. So I want to make sure that you can kind of see there are other ways to do it. The rotary is really nice. I won't lie, I use it quite frequently. Simply because if you look right now, I'm just having a couple little problems as I'm getting it around the thread. It's a little bit easier to use that rotary as we get up here. But I am now at the tie-off point. I'm just going to lock my, um, my dubbing loop down with a couple thread wraps, trim it off. And then next what I'm going to do is kind of lean back a little bit and bring my thread a little bit closer towards the thorax. If you look at the bottom, you'll see the thread kind of blends in with everything. So don't be too concerned if you can see that. So I'm just going to wrap back, have one wrap there kind of ready for my, for my foam. Now before I bring that foam forward, I want to get rid of some of this, um, this dubbing. It just gets a little wild. So I want to clear the, the shank, I want to clear the gap. It's okay to have some of this stuff going all over the place, but I don't want it too super crazy. All right, that looks a little bit more manageable. You can probably see more of the fibers than I can. All right, the next step is to bring this body over. Now you're going to notice this body, it's longer. I mean, this is a size 12 foam body. So I'm going to bring it over, and I may not be able to get it perfectly in that little hinge point that they've kind of created. I'm going to try my best to do that. So I'm just going to wrap it once, twice, three times with kind of looser wraps, and then really pull down. Then I'll secure it with three more wraps. And there's kind of our finished beetle body. Now at this point, you have a couple options. I'm going to just go right and trim the head down just a hair. I want it just peeking over that eye. And then finally, we're going to add our beetle legs. Now, don't get too caught up in, in the colors and all the, the options that are out there. Trust me, I love all of those. I love using variegated legs. In this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to use some Life Flex legs. The color is black. I'll show you after I lock these in why I like them so much. But uh, you have a couple options on how to lock them in. For me, I'm just going to secure them around the thread. And I want to lock them in place so, let me get three wraps, I'll see if I can show you this. I want them so they're just under the foam. We're talking like just under the foam. That way it won't be pushing down on them too much. So I'll do that on my side as well. I'll just wrap them around the thread. Then take one thread wrap, and in this case, on my side, I can kind of pivot and position them where I want them to go. So I'll take two wraps around this one, ensure that they're locked. Trying to make them look as consistent as possible on both sides. They won't always. Trust me, I don't think the fish mind. And if you feel comfortable, you can go with your whip finish right over everything. We'll see if I'm, if I'm going to get lucky today. There's two. Mm, this leg on your side does not like me. Three, four, and here is number five. So I did get lucky with that one. I trim my legs, just clean it up a hair. To ensure the consistency with the legs, I'm just going to kind of pinch them all up straight up in the air 
and do a cut that way. And there is my finished beetle. Now the leg length, that's really up to you. I like it to be about the length of the body, maybe a little bit longer, just because you can see these legs have just really cool movement. That's why I like the Life Flex ones. Now I did mention, don't get too caught up in legs, though I will give you a little peek at one that I like to fish really at a certain time in the summer. I'm not gonna give you too much. I mean, come on, this is a free YouTube video. But if you look, I'm using that same Life Flex material, chartreuse legs. Now, number one, I can see them a lot better, but number two, think about what's going on in the summertime. What else is that color? Now, that's my only hint I'm, get, I'm going to give you. All right, so um, now that we've finished tying this beetle, let's change the camera angle and talk just a little bit more about it. So that's all there is to the foam beetle. But now let's break it down and talk a little bit more specifically, both related to fly tying and fly fishing. For fly tying, I mean, have fun with this fly. The biggest part of this video, I wanted to show you that you could take a tool that's intended to, to tie a size 12 foam beetle and tie a size 14 with it. If you think about what I did though, I basically just took the overall length and I shortened it to fit on a size 14 hook. So you have to decide, do you want to keep it the same width, which I did keep it the same width, or do you want to trim it down with scissors or with a razor blade? Do you want to buy one of each tool or do you want to do something that I used to do and just not even worry about a tool and just cut them, cut them out with scissors? Now it's really up to you which direction you want to take. I can tell you the one advantage of a tool is speed and accuracy. When you look in your, look in your box, you're going to just look at a bunch of flies that all look exactly the same because that's what having that tool really helps you produce in a really efficient manner. So just kind of take all that stuff into consideration and then now Let's talk about the variations because that's something that I love. Now the simple one is the body. Instead of using that peacock colored ice dubbing, you can go with a natural like peacock curl. You can use some other colors down there. Don't be afraid to just throw some fluorescent colors in just to grab the trout's attention. And speaking of fluorescent, you saw that I had those fluorescent legs on that, that last one that I shared with all of you. And I love to change the leg color. but. Don't get caught up in doing that because you have just a million different options out there. I tend to go with black, brown, a dark model color, and then I have some fluorescent ones I just throw in there to really capture the trout's attention. But don't let all that stuff get in the way. Just have fun tying this fly, but you may also want to consider adding a hot spot or something to the top of it like fluorescent colored Antron, just a little tuft over top just so you can see this fly once it lands in the water because it's a dark fly and it can get tough once it lands and you lose sight of it. Now, there is one tip that will help you not lose as much sight of it and that's the way you fish it. Because if we think about a beetle, it's a terrestrial. It's falling off the land. It's not meant to be in the water and it lands with a splat. And that's how I encourage you to make your cast. Basically, you want to mess up. You want this fly just splatting down and making a commotion on the water because that's what typically happens. Now, there's a, a cast that you can make that will really help you do that. It's called the tuck cast spelled T-U-C-K. And it basically is gonna to help to kind of roll over your tip it really fast and allow that fly to just really just plummet to the water. So if you've located a fish that you believe is tucked up against the edge and you see it, your first cast, I would recommend you to kind of make that first cast closer to the bottom of that fish definitely behind it because sometimes the fish are going to kind of feel those vibrations, know something landed behind them, and also recognize that it could be a beetle. Turn and engulf that fly. If they don't turn on that one, then you can make a cast a little bit further up, maybe drift it over, or make a cast right on top of them, right on their head, and see if they immediately just look up and just take over that fly. So have fun whenever you're fishing this, but by all means, you want to be making your casts more towards the bank than the middle of the stream because quite naturally, that's where beetles will fall. Now, can you fish this as a dry dropper? Absolutely, and I think I talked a little bit during the video that you may want to vary the size of the fly depending on what you're trying to suspend underneath it. If you're trying to suspend a really large bead head, then you may want to go with something like a size 10 beetle. Versus if you're going with something more like a little two and a half millimeter uh, tungsten bead, you can get away with a size 14, no problem. So just play around with that and think exactly how you want to use it and in what situations and tie accordingly. Well, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this tying tutorial of 
the foam beetle. If you'd like to watch more like this, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. Once you get to my website, I do have a page listed under fly tying videos that's listing a bunch of dis different terrestrials, some of my favorite ant patterns, and some other hoppers and stuff that you will definitely love to tie if you haven't already checked out that page. If you have, thank you. If you have any questions, you can always email me at tkamisa at gmail.com or you can leave them down below in the comments section. You can leave any comments down there. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can do so either through email or if you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Facebook and on Instagram. And a big shout out to everyone who's sharing my videos on Facebook. That really means a ton to me to know that you liked the video that much that you felt compelled to share it with your friends and others on Facebook or through email or wherever. So thank you so much. And then finally, if you're into email lists, if you don't already get enough email like me, I send out a about an email once a month that just gives fly fishing tips, fly tying tips. I show some recent pictures and I also talk about video releases. If you'd like to sign up for that, you can shoot me an email or just go to troutandfeather.com, scroll to the bottom, put your email address in there and it will automatically sign you up. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching this fly tying tutorial and I'll see all of you next time.